Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. My name is Lauren and I am about to guide you through a gentle yoga practice focusing on the throat chakra. Uh, so of course, like all of the chakras, there's a deeper meaning to um, each and every one of them. And so in today's practice, we are going to be doing quite a bit of sort of neck stretches, opening this physical space up, but especially as we get to the final chakras, um, more, more or less the heart and above, <clears throat> um, it, the, the focus or the topics behind or the meanings behind the uh, chakras becomes a lot less about things that are tangible and things that are um, easy to explain <laughs> and things about the physical world of your physical being. And so just a reminder that even though we're going to focus on opening this space, the throat chakra is so much more than just about your neck or your throat. Um, the big thing, I'll just touch on it briefly, is um, speaking up for yourself standing up for yourself, making sure your voice is heard, um, standing up for what's right. Um, similarly, and this is made probably a little bit more obvious, how you speak to others, how you speak about others, how you speak about yourself. Um, so using your voice and all the ways that you can use your voice. So um, this is a really powerful one. Um, but again, we'll open this physical space, but it's about more than that. Okay. So for today's practice, um, you are going to need two blocks. We're going to be coming to supported fish later. And so two blocks is ideal. But if you've got things that are like blocks, that works too. Um, and we're going to start on our backs. So come on down onto your back. Make yourself comfortable. And so and support your head and your neck. And as you're supporting your head and your neck, make sure you're not letting whatever you're resting on, whether it's a pillow or a blanket, your shoulders are not resting on that space. The hope is that it's really just the head and that the neck and shoulders can sort of relax and they have some space to relax down. Okay. So just take a comfortable position, do what feels best for you, and allow yourself to relax. Allow your muscles to soften away from the bones. Allow your joints to open, to allow some space. Let your breath be fluid and smooth. And just settle in. And then draw your attention to your breath. And notice here how quiet your breath is. Notice if your breath creates any sound or if it's just a whisper. Continue breathing in a smooth, fluid way. But now allow your breath, especially on the exhalation, to create a sound. We'll move into the ujjayi breath. And if you're new to the ujjayi breath, I recommend doing so with an open mouth for the exhalation. Breathing out the mouth as if you're trying to fog up a mirror that's right in front of your face. It's caused by a slight restriction in the back of the throat, the same mechanism that happens when you whisper. So you'll breathe in through your nose. 
And exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. Now we'll continue with the Ujjayi breath. So continue breathing just like this. Creating this audible sound on the exhalation. And so that, imagine that if there was someone else in the room with you, they could hear you breathe. Each and every exhalation, they would be able to hear it. And now as you get more comfortable with the Ujjayi breath, continue breathing in exactly this way, but... Exhale with the mouth closed. We'll still create a sound. It won't be quite as loud. It will be more subtle. But we can continue with the ujjayi breath with the mouth closed. Now continue in this way. And every time you exhale, lengthen the breath. And feel the heat, the warmth, the attention in the throat. Imagine this energy building and clearing. Drawing your attention, your effort, your energy to the throat. I will stay with the ujjayi breath, but now... Soften your breath. Make each Ujjayi breath a little bit quieter than the one before it. Can you soften the intensity of the Ujjayi breath? So you're still breathing in this manner, but in a more subtle way. Now check it back in with this feeling in the throat. Checking in with this energy, this heat, this attention. It's still there. And you can rev it up and fire it up at any moment, but allow it to soften here. Imagine the energy softening, releasing. Continue this for three more breaths. And then release the ujjayi breath. Come back to your natural breath. Notice how you feel. Now keeping your attention inward if it feels right. You're welcome to set an intention for your practice. Reflect on a positive word or phrase and silently and slowly repeat it to allow it to settle in your heart. And 
it out deep in your breath. Start to take big, full breaths and then add movement around your body. Wiggle fingers and toes, rock the head side to side, move arms and legs. And you know the deal, take some time, move however you would like. This past summer, I was teaching at a farmer's market. And I was teaching to larger groups. It's on my mind because I just did it yesterday. <laughs> and um, I'm teaching to larger groups and it's a free class. And so it's people kind of from all over, not people who are typically my students, you know, which is really fun. But um, I give them because it's on all levels class and some people have a really, really strong vinyasa practice. And I can tell they're itching to try a handstand. And some people came to like lay on their mat. So I give everyone one minute to do whatever you want. And some people just look at me like, what? <laughs> I kind of love it, but <laughs> okay. Anyways, a few more moments. Do what you want. All right. We're going to stay on our backs. So come on down onto your back. Knees bent, feet flat. Knees and feet can either be together, hip distance. I like the arms out in opposite directions with the palms up. And again, check in. Shoulder blades definitely are on the mat, but your head is welcome to be on something just slightly elevated. All right. Let the knees sway from side to side. So we're going to move a little bit slower than we maybe typically would. So slow it down. Really slow, really controlled but not a lot of effort, not a lot of force, just gentle. Remember, the name of the game is gentle, right? Okay. I, <laughs> I guess I'm full of stories today. I took a gentle class recently at work from one of my instructors, and I told her after, I said, you're gentle is hard. And she said, I think gentle is a state of mind. <laughs> so maybe you have that mindset. <laughs> maybe gentle is just a state of mind. But for me, gentle is more than that. <laughs> I want everything in the moment to be gentle. So let your muscles relax, your body, your breath, let it all soften. Now, you can stay just like this, focus on the legs. But the reason I want you to move a little bit slower today is now you've got the option to move with the head and the neck. So as your knees drop one way, let your head and your neck turn the opposite way. And then bring it back to the center. And then switch. Knees fall the opposite way. I'm sorry. Knees, well, yeah, they fall the opposite way they just were. And then your head falls the opposite way. It just was. You get the idea. Add the head and the neck, but again, slower. If we're adding the head and the neck, it's a little bit more sensitive. So we have to be a little bit more thoughtful, which is good because we already are mindful, but just a little added thought. Slow and controlled. Move with your breath. All right. Let your legs go to each side one more time. And then let your legs fall and stay wherever they're at. Right, left, either way. Let your legs fall to one direction. Let the head turn. Take three deep breaths. Inhale, return it back to the center. Pause for a full, complete breath. And then switch, let the legs fall, let the head turn, take three deep breaths. Inhale, return everything back to the center. Okay. 
All right. Now, if you've got something under the back of your head, you're going to remove it. This is one of the few things that <clears throat> we're better off without anything under our head. Okay. So we're going to do some bridges. You probably predicted that. So knees bent, feet flat, feet and knees hip distance, toes forward. Now, oftentimes, and especially since you can see me from the side, maybe I'll show you this. Now, oftentimes, and I used to teach this too, and then I have since learned something new. Oftentimes, teachers will say, lengthen your arms, palms down, reach the fingertips forward, and crawl your heels back so much that you can touch your fingertips. Or, I'm sorry, that you can touch your <laughs> you can touch your fingertips. You can touch your heels. Um, you might be able to see me uh, if as I do this. If we do that and then we lift the hips, my knees are over my ankles, closer to my toes. We want the shin to be a vertical line, not a diagonal. So if you're walking your heels back that far, walk them forward a little bit. Okay, so your heels should not be right by your backside and your fingertips should not be able to touch your heels. Again, I used to say that too. So always remember if another teacher says something different, it doesn't mean one person's wrong and one's right. It's just we all have learned different information from different sources and have different priorities. Okay, let's do just a few pelvic tilts. So relax the shoulders, relax the arm, focus on your lower back and your pelvis. So inhale, lift your lower back, lift your ribs, point your belly button towards your thighs. Exhale, push the lower back down, push the ribs down, point your belly button towards your face, move with your breath. Inhale, arch the back. Exhale, flatten, push down into the mat. Inhale, lift, reach, rise. Exhale, push down into the mat, create wrinkles by your belly. Do just two more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Now we're going to move into bridges. So keep that tuck of the tailbone. Push the heels down. Inhale. Lift the seat. Lift the lower back. Lift the mid back. Squeeze your glutes at the top. Exhale. Lower the mid back. Lower the low back. Lower the hips. Keep the tuck of the tailbone till the last moment. Inhale. Push your feet down. Lift. Reach. Rise. Squeeze the glutes. Contract your backside. Exhale. Tuck your tailbone, belly button to your face as you lower, as you come down. Now keep moving with your breath. Now, here, your head and your neck is in neutral. As you're moving through these bridges, you're lifting your hips up. The weight of your torso is coming down into your shoulders, not into the neck, but into the upper back and into the shoulders, which is a little too close for comfort with the neck, right? So neck is in neutral. Relax the shoulders. We're going to do a few more. Now, keeping your neck in neutral, maybe you add a little bit of movement in the arms. So push the feet down. Inhale, lift the hips, reach the fingertips up towards the sky. Let the thumbs tap the ground behind you. And then exhale, return both the arms, the seat, the torso back down. Let's do just a handful more. Inhale, lift. Reach, rise, relax the neck. Exhale, slowly lower, slowly release, peeling back down onto the mat. One vertebrae at a time. Keep that tuck of the tailbone. Three more just like this. Arms are moving. Chest, throat, neck, and jaw relaxed. Minimal effort here. Glutes, backs of the thighs working. Two more but nothing too intense. You're feeling engagement in the muscles. One more. And the next time you come all the way down, come into constructive resting pose, keeping the knees bent, feet flat, just walk the feet out wide to the long edges of the mat. Knock the knees in. Take a few deep breaths. Let your lower back relax. Let it soften.
Inhale. Exhale, hug your knees into your chest. Do what feels good. Maybe rock side to side. That's usually a good one here. So when we were in bridges, we were strengthening and therefore shortening the lower back. So when you hug your knees into your chest, you're lengthening the lower back. And when you rock side to side, it should feel like a good massage there. Stay one more breath. All right, now we're going to come up to a seat. You know, you've got your options, but come on up. Whew Make yourself comfortable. I'm just in a chatty mood today, so I'll just keep going with it. I, again, in teaching group classes to people who aren't typically in my classes, when I say take a comfortable seat, and if I sit like a goofy, like yoga teacher way, it's funny to see how many like brand new people want to sit with their legs all like twisty tied into a pretzel, even though I told them to sit in a comfortable way. I don't, you guys know. So thank you. <laughs> Please do what feels good. I really mean it. <laughs> people will be making these faces like <laughs> because they want to sit like I do. <laughs> all right. Sit the way. You want to sit. Relax, but sit up tall. Soften the shoulders. Seated cat and cows. Inhale, draw the belly forward. Lift the chest, lift the heart. Look up. Exhale, tuck the tailbone. Ribs back, chin to the chest. Look down. Inhale, belly forward like your belly pointing your belly button down towards your thighs, but your heart shines up. Exhale, tuck the tele tailbone. Draw your belly back, chin to the chest, move with your breath. Now keep the shoulders and arms relaxed. Notice how your head and your neck feel here. Draw your attention there. As you draw the head back and the head forward, what goes on in the neck? Do one more of each. All right, return to the center, back to a long neutral spine, lengthen up, inhale, circle the arms up, exhale, bring the right hand down, sweep the left fingertips over, we'll move with the breath, inhale, lengthen, long neutral spine, exhale, switch sides, left hand down, right fingertips reach, inhale, lengthen, now as you lengthen here, reach the crown of your head up, now the crown of your head is not the same thing as your forehead. I often see people confuse the two, I guess. So as we lengthen, there should be no wrinkles in the back of your neck. Lengthen up through, again, the back side, sort of the back of the spine. Okay. Now return back to the center. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, bring the right hand down, sweep left fingertips over. We're going to hold this side for a few moments. So a few things, relax your right shoulder, relax your left shoulder, and then push your left hip down into the ground. Draw your ribs back towards the wall behind you. Okay, now this right arm, I'm sorry, your left arm might be sort of feeling like it's in front of you. That's okay. I'd rather it be sort of in front of you than you insist on drawing it back and lose all the rest of that. Okay, now we're going to focus on the head and the neck. So inhale, exhale, turn at your neck so you're dropping your head to look down towards your mat. Inhale, reach up or lengthen and look up. Exhale, look down. Just a few more like this. Move with your breath, slow and controlled. Now keep dropping your left hip down into the mat, lengthening through the side of the body. Now the next time you look down, pause there. So looking down towards your mat, really push the right hand down. Inhale, return back up, lengthen up. Exhale, switch sides, left hand down, right fingertips reach up and over. Now relax the left shoulder, relax the right shoulder. Drop the right hip down into the ground, 
draw the ribs back towards the wall behind you. And again, the arm might kind of come forward. That's okay. All right, relax the shoulders. And then look down towards the ground. Inhale, look up. Exhale, look down. Now we're adding the neck in with the side stretch. So keep moving with the head and the neck and keep dropping the right side of your seat down into the mat, down into the ground. Do one more. The next time you look down, pause there. Look down towards the mat. Push the left hand down. Inhale, return back up. Lengthen. Twist. Exhale, drop the arms. Take a twist over to the right. We're going to move with the breath again. Inhale, return. Lengthen back up. Exhale, drop the arms. Rotate over to the left. Inhale, lengthen. Sit up tall. Lengthen through the back of the spine, the back of the neck. No wrinkles in the back of the neck. And shoulders are relaxed and soft, even when the arms come up overhead. Let's do one more on each side, just like this. All right, and we're gonna come into a longer hold again. So one more time, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, drop the arms, take the twist over to the right. Your right hand comes down to help you lengthen and sit up tall. Left hand can just rest on the right thigh. But drop your seat into the mat to sit up tall. Reach the crown of the head up, no wrinkles in the back of the neck. Turn your heart over to the right and maybe turn at your neck to look over your right shoulder. Take three breaths. Inhale, circle the arms, reach up. Exhale, drop the arms, take the twist, hold it here for a few moments. Now the left hand will come down, use it as leverage to sit up tall. Right hand can just rest on the thigh. Sit up tall, reach the crown of the head up, lengthen the spine. No wrinkles in the back of the neck, but you are welcome to turn at the neck. Therefore, I suppose creating a wrinkle by turning in the Neck and looking over your left shoulder. Three breaths here. Inhale, slowly unwind, return back to the center. <sighs> Okay, maybe roll the shoulders out, maybe move through the head and the neck. All right. Okay, let's do one more movement here. So if you're sitting asymmetrically, change the cross of your legs, other leg in front or on top. Okay, now this movement is kind of a funky one, but this is really great for those of us who are on phones, on computers, kind of looking down often. Okay, so most of us. <laughs> so lengthen up. Crown of the head up, relax the shoulders, relax the arms, focus on the head and the neck. So think about drawing the back of your skull towards the wall behind you, like you're just sliding your head back. So your head doesn't come up or down at all. It just slides back, sort of like you're giving yourself a double chin. And then come forward, back to neutral, not necessarily sticking it forward. Forward, and then back. We're going to keep doing this a few times. Come forward, just to neutral, and back. Forward to neutral and back. Now do a few more like this. I want you to watch from the side for a moment. So the hope is good alignment, but you know, I don't like the word good, but you know, what we're looking for is the ears over the shoulders, the center of the ear over the center of the shoulder. Most of us walk around like this and don't realize it. So that's what we're, we're trying to go back and then to neutral, back. And to neutral. Just do just two more. These muscles probably aren't used to doing this movement. So it might feel awkward, foreign. You might have like started to feel like they got tired. You just found a movement that you need to do more often. Ta-da! 
<laughs> all right, let's come to tabletop. Let's set up on all fours. All right, and we're going to be kneeling for a little bit. So if you want to pad under your knees, do what you got to do. And I always like to grab blocks for this. We're going to focus on our hips and our pelvis again. Give our neck a break. All right. So from tabletop, let's step the right foot forward in between the hands, in between the blocks. All right. And then bend the right knee, push down into the heel, bring your hands to the top of the thigh. Now, I am looking for, again, good alignment, right? Um, the hope is that your each of your knees, I suppose, is more or less a right angle. So I'm not looking for like steep diagonal lines through the legs. It's sort of more boxy looking. Okay. Push down through the right heel. You can wiggle your right toes. If you feel like this is a little wobbly, walk your right foot over one heel toe over to the right. Okay. Arms can go wherever you feel most comfortable and most stable, but let's do some pelvic tilts. So inhale, draw your belly forward, stick your seat out behind you, and then tuck your tailbone, create wrinkles in the front of your shirt by your belly button, feel a stretch in the front of the left hip. Inhale, push the ribs forward, your seat out, arch the back, come into a back bend. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, draw your ribs back like you're pointing your belly button towards your face. Inhale, draw the belly forward, belly button points down. Exhale, tuck the tailbone. Now just a few more like this. This pelvic tilt here. Keep pushing firmly through the right heel. Again, ability to wiggle your right toes. Do one more of each. And the next time you tuck your tailbone, hold it there. So tuck the tailbone, hold it here. Now keep pushing down into the right heel. Even down with the left toes, top of the foot, shin, the knee, tuck the tailbone, lengthen the lower back, lengthen the front of the left hip. Now, depending on where your blocks are and where you're comfortable, maybe you just stay right here. Maybe you bring the arms to goal post, maybe up as if you're in like a warrior one. Maybe you take a side stretch, bringing the right hand down sweeping left fingertips over. Maybe you take yoga mudra, but wherever you're at, let's stay for about three or four breaths. All right, and then inhale, return back up, right? Bringing the hands either to the thigh or the hip, all right? And then we're gonna bring the hands down onto the blocks. And for this one, I like the blocks at their highest height. Now, same thing, we still want this left knee more or less a right angle, the hip over the knee. But the right foot, we're gonna crawl it forward as far forward as it'll go. The right leg might become a straight line, it might not, that's okay. We want to square up the hips. So think about what direction your belly button is pointing. Is it pointing sort of forward and to the left? Well, can you square it up so it just points forward? Imagine you had a mirror in front of you. Could you point your reflection, I'm sorry, your belly button at your reflection? All right. And then push your right heel forward towards that imaginary reflection. Reach your toes up towards the sky. Feel length through the back of the right leg. No wrong spot to feel it. Maybe the thigh, the knee, the calf, maybe down by the Achilles. Push the hands down into the blocks. Keep lifting the chest. Lengthen through the back of the neck. Instead of looking forward and putting all those wrinkles in the back of the neck, lengthen crown of the head forward up and away tailbone down and back heel forward toes to the sky two deep breaths all right we're going to stay right here but we're just going to add a little bit of movement to this. So keeping the leg long and moving just all the way up here at the hip joint, rotate the leg like you're turning the leg to point over to the right, the toes and the knee over to the right, and then back up to the center and now over to the left, moving at the hip joint. So it's like you're getting your toes and your kneecap to face over the left and then keep rotating 
over the right and over to the left. Notice how this changes the sensation through the leg. Keep lifting the chest, lengthening the spine. Do this one more time each side. Okay, and then return back to the center. And we're going to come to tabletop. So you can just slide that leg back. Give yourself some time. Take whatever feels good. Stretch the legs back. Take a down dog. Whatever. Roll out the wrists. Okay, same thing, second side. So when you're ready, step the left foot forward. <laughs> Despite having done it with you, I forgot for a moment. Okay, step the left foot forward, push down into the left heel, bring the hands to the top of the thigh, lift the torso, and if you feel a little wobbly, crawl the left foot over, one heel toe over to the left. Now we wanna sort of set up so that knees are more or less right angles. So not too long of a stance. We're not sort of lunging into it. Okay, push down through the left heel. You can wiggle the left toes, lengthen up, pelvic tilt. So place the hands where you like, and inhale, draw the belly forward. Stick your seat out behind you. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, point your belly button up towards your face. Inhale, belly forward, arch your back. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, stretch your hip flexors. So a few more like this. Now relax your shoulders, relax the arms. Focus on the pelvis, focus on this movement here. Opening up all these spaces. All of this gets so tight from sitting, from standing. So many of our daily habits. Let's do one more of each. And the next time you tuck your tailbone, tuck and hold. So keep tucking the tailbone like you're pointing your belly button towards your face. Create the wrinkles. Feel the stretch in the front of the right hip. You've got options. Now continue to push through the left heel. Find that stability. And then any arm position you'd like, reach the arms back, goal post up. Maybe bring the left hand down and reach the right fingertips up and over. Adding that side stretch, but just like before, that side stretch, relax the shoulders, draw the ribs in, all that stuff. Keep tucking the tailbone, push down through the left heel, take three breaths. All right, and then inhale, return the torso back upright, release the arms, bring the hands down to the blocks. Here's where I definitely like the blocks at their highest height, back knee still more or less at a right angle, and we crawl the left foot forward. Okay, so crawl the left foot forward as much as it can, and then square your hips. Where would your belly button point if it was a laser pointer, right? So can you square up the hips, draw the right hip forward, left hip back, lengthen the left leg, push the left heel forward, left toes to the sky, push the hands into the mat, lift your chest, lengthen your spine, no wrinkles in the back of the neck. Notice what you're feeling through the back of the left leg. Two deep breaths here. All right. Now we're going to stay here just another moment. Keep the leg long. And moving all the way up at the hip joint, turn the left toes over to the left, left kneecap over to the left. And then, like your toes are tracing a rainbow, sweep the leg up and over so your toes point to the right. And keep moving just like this. Now, again, you're not moving at the ankle. You're not moving at the knee. You're opening at the hip, all the way up at the ball and socket joint of the hip. So just like this, notice this feeling. 
one more on each side. And then returning back, toes to the sky, and then slide that leg back. Come back to tabletop again. Take whatever feels good. Roll out the wrists, child's pose, down dog. You know all your options. All right. Okay. Now from wherever you're at, come to tabletop. From tabletop, let's all come to down dog. So walk your hands one whole handprint closer to the top of your mat. Hook your toes under. Inhale. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Stay for about three breaths. If you want to pedal out the heels or just stay still. Or breathe. And then being aware if you've got a blanket or something on your mat, but deeply bend the knees. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, travel forward. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Feet hip distance at the top of the mat. Knees have at least a slight bend, if not a deep bend. Maybe you grab onto opposite elbows. Maybe you let the head shake, yes and no, or do circles. Maybe you let the torso sway. Maybe you straighten your legs. Bend your legs. Three breaths. Uttanasana. All right, and then return back to a traditional forward fold. Soft bend in the knees, weight in the heels. Inhale, lift up halfway, lengthen your spine. Exhale, fold forward. Push the heels down. Inhale, rise all the way up. Circle the arms, lift the chest, maybe even look up. And then bring the hands to the heart. Take a deep breath to Dasana Mountain Pose. So something that you can always come back to is the ujjayi breath. Most pranayamas, uh, breathing techniques, should only be used when you're just sitting or laying and doing that and that alone, with the exception of the ujjayi breath. So I encourage you here as we move through these next few pose, poses, <laughs> move with your breath with the ujjayi breath. So think about creating that sound, that deep, really almost sigh, exhalation, let it out, let it release, and just bringing some attention to the throat. Okay, so arms can go wherever you like, but set yourself up in a Tadasana. So weight back in the heels. I mentioned alignment earlier. So center of the ear over the center of the shoulder, over the center of the hip, over the back of the heel. So you can wiggle your toes, tops of the thighs are firm, tailbone is in neutral, spine is long, shoulders are soft away from the ears, take a deep breath. Inhale, circle the arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise all the way up. Circle the arms, lift the chest. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, push through the heels, lift, reach, rise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise, push the heels down, lift the chest. Let's do one more. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. 
Inhale, rise all the way up. Urdhva Hastasana, lift the chest. Exhale, Tadasana, mountain pose. Take a few deep breaths. All right, now let's come into tree pose. Okay, so we're going to take tree pose a little differently than we typically take it. Um, I guess I got ahead of myself. 99% <laughs> of it will be in the same way that we're going to take it. Let me, let's, let's do the 99% and then we'll add that last little change at the end. So just set up like you typically would. Feet, hip distance, weight back in the heels. You can wiggle your toes. Shift your weight into the right foot. Create a kickstand with the left. Toes on the ground, heel above the ankle. Now pelvis level in that the waistband of your pants is parallel to the ground instead of a diagonal line. Weight is still back in that right heel. You can wiggle your right toes. Lift the chest, relax the shoulders, place the arms where you like. Look at something that won't move and maybe slide the foot up. Okay, so you're looking at something that will not move. I want you to continue doing that, but inhale, lengthen up through the crown of the head. Exhale as you turn your neck like you're going to look over your right shoulder, but you're still looking forward at that spot. Inhale, turn the neck back to center. Exhale, keep looking at that spot, but now turn your head over to the left. We're going to do this a few more times. Inhale to the center. Exhale, slowly turn the head and the neck. You don't even have to turn it that much. Inhale forward. Exhale, rotate. We're going to do this one more time, each side just like this. You're keeping your eyes locked on a fixed spot. Your eyes do not move with your head and neck. So this is challenging our balance. A little bit more as well as bringing attention to the neck. Now, return back to the center. Neck in neutral, spine in neutral. Really push through that right heel. Inhale. Exhale, slowly close the hip. Kneecaps forward and then release the leg down. Take movements however feels good. Roll the right ankle. Let the hip sway. But keeping your eyes on a fixed spot still helps you balance, but adding that movement of the head and the neck is going to add an element of challenge for balance. So know that you can skip that part. Maybe should have said that before we did the first side, but you survived, right? Okay. So same thing. Feet hip distance, weight in the heels, out of the toes, shift to the left, kickstand the right. Hips remain level and even, pelvis neutral. Draw belly button forward. Lengthen, soften, find a focal point. Find something that you will continue to look at the whole time you're in tree pose on this side. Maybe you slide the right foot up. Make sure it doesn't rest on the knee. Now, push through the left heel. You can wiggle your left toes. Inhale, stand up tall. Exhale, keep your eyes on that spot, but turn your head over to the left. Inhale, return your neck to neutral. Exhale, keep your eyes on that spot, but turn your head as if you're looking to the right. Keep moving with your breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Maybe your breath is silent. Maybe you're coming back to that ujjayi breath, that loud exhalation. And the ujjayi breath really can be done on an inhalation as well. It's a little more challenging. Maybe you try it. Now keep pushing down through the left heel. Stand up tall. We're doing one more on each side. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Now when you return back to the center, neck in neutral. Inhale. Return the hips to neutral. Kneecaps forward. Exhale. Release the leg. Release the arms. Take some time to move around. Okay, 
All right, come back to the top of your mat, facing forward in a strong Tadasana, ground to the feet, lengthen through the spine. Inhale, circle the arms up, maybe even look up if it feels okay in your neck. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, step the right foot back. Inhale. Exhale, step the left foot back, downward facing dog. A few breaths here. This is your last opportunity for any down dog variation or movement. Maybe you stay still, maybe you wiggle, but take about three breaths. Right. Now let's meet in tabletop, deeply bend the knees, come on down, and then let's take a seat. So swing the legs around. We're going to come to a seated twist. So you generally don't need to sit on anything for this next pose. All right. Let's start with the legs extended long. All right. Keep the left leg long, foot flexed, toes to the sky. Bend the right knee, bring the bottom of the foot down onto the ground. It can stay to the inside. It can come to the outside. If it comes to the outside of the thigh, the base of the big toe needs to be flat on the ground. If you're here and you're looking for a little bit more oomph in this pose, you might bend the left leg. So you'll probably lean over to the left, pick your right hip up, bend that knee, and the pinky toe side of the left foot comes down. And then you've got to drop the right hip back down. If you are leaning over to your left, straighten the left leg again. So make sure that it feels like your weight is pretty evenly distributed between your two sides. And then base of the right big toe down. All right. Right hand comes down. Push the fingertips down to sit up tall. Inhale, reach left fingertips up towards the sky. Inhale. Exhale as you turn, twist, and rotate over to the right. You might use your left arm to hug the thigh in. You might hook the tricep to the quad. But either way, inhale, lengthen, sit up a little taller. Exhale, turn and rotate, turning your heart over to the right. And maybe you turn at your neck to look over your right shoulder. Maybe you stretch your eyes and you look out of the right corners of your eyes as much as you can. Take three more breaths here. And then blink the eyes back to neutral. Return the head, the neck, the shoulders, the arms, the spine, and the legs. And then you can kind of bounce them around, roll them around. It's a twist, but everything kind of gets involved. All right. So now we're going to keep the right leg long, that foot flex, bend the left knee, bottom of the foot to the inside or the outside of the leg, base of the big toe down. You could stay here or put your right hand down, lean a little over to the right, bend the right knee. Again, sort of the pinky toe side of the foot will rest. Now your left side has to come back down. So push the left hip down, base of the left big toe down. All right, left hand down, use it to sit up tall. Inhale, reach right fingertips up towards the sky. Exhale into the twist, into the rotation. So again, right arm might hug the left leg in. You might hook tricep to quad. But again, use this left hand, use this left arm as leverage to sit up tall. We can twist deeper if we are lengthening the spine simultaneously. And then turn at your chest and your heart to look over to the left, maybe turn at your neck to look over your left shoulder, maybe look out of the left corners of your eyes as much as you can. Stay for three more breaths. And then blink the eyes back to neutral. 
Return the head, the neck, the shoulders, the arms, and the legs. <sighs> okay. All right. Now we're going to set up in supported fish, but I'm going to give you an option that I don't usually give to students because um, it's just a little bit deeper. I just find that the average student just it's not really in their wheelhouse, but I'll give you this option. So fish pose. As most of you know, we take two blocks and we create this sort of T shape formation. So and actually, I'll give you multiple options here. There's another option that I often don't give students because I just um, I like my version better. <laughs> But maybe you like the other version better. So I like this T formation. You could set up in like an equal sign formation. So your blocks could be perpendicular or parallel to each other. But the non-negotiable thing is that the one for your head still has to go like ear to ear, right? So I like it along the spine, but you might like it along the shoulder blades or maybe a little below there. Okay. So that's one option, that's one set of options. The other set of options, um, I would put the, the one that's gonna be more for your torso on the lowest height, but the one for your head, I often like it one height higher than the one for your back, but to open through the throat a little bit more, you could have it lower to open through the throat quite deeply and this is where I feel like this usually is not comfortable for some for most students but it might be for you who knows right I don't you have to find out <laughs> maybe you actually like the opposite higher in the spine lower in the head it's quite an opening again like I said earlier please do what feels comfortable so the versions of the blocks you can change the second one, the one that's closer to you, whether it's parallel or perpendicular to the one above it. And again, sort of the most um, gentle, mild version would be this, lowest under your spine, medium under your head. That's where I'm gonna go. Well, you again, do what you like. So I like to start with knees bent. I lower down onto my forearms. Wiggle that block so it's centered, it's straight, it's where I like it. And then same thing with this one, making sure it's in the back of your head, not the neck. Now you can stay with your knees bent and your feet flat. It might feel comfortable to lengthen the legs. But again, just keep checking in with how all parts of your body is feeling. So we often focus on the torso and sort of the lower and mid back in this pose, but how does your upper back feel? How does your neck feel? Is your jaw holding on to any tension? Can you relax through your forehead and eyebrows? Allow yourself to relax.
slowly deepen your breath. Maybe coming back to the Ujjayi breath. And slowly start to wiggle fingers and toes. Rock the head side to side. <clears throat> and if your legs are long against your mat, slowly bend your knees, bringing your feet back flat onto the mat. Add some movement to the arms. And when you're ready, roll off the block, sideways, all the way off the blocks, coming onto your side in a tucked fetal position, resting your ear on your arm to support your head and neck. And then push the blocks off to the side and roll onto your back. Knees bent, feet flat, constructive resting pose, feet wide, knock the knees in. Notice how you feel. Take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, hug your knees in towards your chest. You can rock from side to side. Maybe move through the toes and ankles and feet. Maybe take happy baby. One more time, do what feels good for a few moments, for a few breaths. Keeping in mind that Shavasana is right around the corner, so the movements you choose to do should be softer, should be more subtle, nothing that takes too much work or effort. We want to very seamlessly make our way into a really relaxing pose. So if there's anything you need to do to make yourself comfortable, to make it so that you can relax, do that here. And then settle in. Take a Shavasana that works for you. Taking a position where your body can relax. And then your breath can relax. And maybe for a few moments you come back one more time to the Ujjayi breath. And then start to gradually soften your ujjayi breath. Let it be a little quieter, a little softer. Even though the sound and the effort lessens, the energy is still present. The awareness, the vibrations, all this energy still moving, working, swirling, unleashing at the throat. But with each breath, soften your breath. Soften. 
until your ujjayi breath is quiet and silent. The practice is still happening in your mind.
slowly deepen your breath. Take bigger breaths and allow those breaths to fill your body. Rock your head from side to side. Run your thumbs over the rest of your fingers as you wiggle your toes. Roll wrists and ankles. Move arms and legs. You can reach your arms overhead, stretching as if you just woke up from a long nap. Take a deep breath in. As you breathe out, hug your knees into your chest. And slowly roll over onto either side in a tough fetal position. Using the strength of both arms, push down into the ground and come up to a comfortable seat. Take a moment here to thank yourself for making it to your mat today and maybe reflect on your intention. Loka Samasta Suki no Bhavantu. May all beings everywhere be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. Now let's join our hands together in front of the heart in Anjali Mudra. The light or the good in me acknowledges, respects, and bows to the light or the good in you. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, my name is Lauren, and this was a gentle yoga practice focused on the throat chakra. So we really did move through the throat and the neck, but again, there's so much more to it. So I'll link some stuff below. And I think that's it. <laughs> I think that's I think that's everything I have to offer for you today. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.